Ron, lovely to see you. Here we are um, face to face. It's great to do this in, in the studio rather than Zoom from the, for the last series. We did a lot of the work mm -hmm. on on Zoom. You're looking suitably refreshed after a lovely summer break. Are you well? I was better when I was in holiday. <laughs> well, let's face it. If we call this work, no, uh, no. you know, uh, there's there's uh, there's worse things. There's worse things to do. I'm well, thank you, Finley. Good to see you. Good, good. Batteries fully charged, and they're they're charging up still. They're charging up still. No, we kind of yeah, loading, loading here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, let's, let's break this in gently. Um, for those of us who maybe haven't, for those people who haven't listened or, or, or watched um, before, uh, we did a, a series, podcast series, before Life in the Brand Lane, mm -hmm. and we were talking about music, specifically classic rock, Yeah. and try to join that up with, with brand and yeah. commercialization. And and so on, and it gave us a chance to to listen to some good music, play some play some good tracks. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So moving into other creative industries, we thought, well, why not movies, the cinema? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I thought, um, how do we join join those up? And and it was with great sadness that we saw just last week that Robbie Robertson had, had died uh, of the band. I'm sure that. Yeah. And while we uh, we we know his his music and and his songs, one of the kind of striking influences for me was uh -huh. the movie that he, the, right. he they did right. with Scorsese, right. the Waltz, the, the Last Waltz, right. and. We spoke a lot about Clapton in the last series, yeah, you know, around right. mythology and, and 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 so on. So, you know, firstly, what are your thoughts on on the passing on 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 his music? Maybe I uh, it's yeah, I, I read that the other day. I mean, phenomenal musician, guitar player, and songwriter. But I think um, and and the band that was the the name of the band, it was right? Band. Which yeah, which yeah, I yeah. quite like, you know. And we're going to get into branding. I thought, what are we going to call the band? Well, the band, right? Yeah. And he's got a good name, Robbie Robertson. I mean, there's a lot of you know kind of little touch points there. But if I remember rightly, and I forget his name, forgive me. The drummer sang a lot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, um, Helm, uh, Leave on Helm, yeah, fantastic voice. Because so, uh, Robertson didn't really sing. No, um, no. I mean, you know, it's amazing how he could write these yeah. really soulful lyrics. Um, yeah. But, but he, you know, to be to be fair to me, he didn't have a great singing voice, but he had like three singers in, in, in the band that were fantastic. Yeah, you get a kind of Eagles-esque yeah. thing yeah, totally, going on, totally. Henley and so on. But I think one of the things about the band... And other bands of that era, and you see this a lot just now, mm -hmm. that everybody's going to see nearly the Eagles, almost ACDC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, all of these bands, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. Because people are wanting the the depth of, of the songwriting, but, you know, the, the, the those songs were meaningful. Uh, to audiences they they weren't just kind of fast food there was something that you would revisit and you would unpack and you would enjoy and we talked a little bit about this the um songs become a soundtrack for your life mm -hmm. for your journey mm -hmm. and, and we talked about the journey of the hero and everything so so this idea of the audience um being involved with the 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 music uh, to to a, so the level of engagement, the way that it would resonate with you. I mean, there he is, and, and we spoke. He's eighty, or was eighty? Forgive me, but had been relevant for decades. Mm. Now, why why is he relevant for decades? And I know we're going to move into branding, uh, but that that's exactly what brands want to do is to is to resonate, be relevant, almost if you can, be vital. Mm -hmm. You know, Nike, Apple. Mm -hmm. that type of thing so the the spark of his songwriting and then that attracts other like-minded you mentioned clapton it's the the movie then i forget when it's made is directed by scorsese mm -hmm. who's already 
a household name. Mm -hmm. So Martin Scorsese is mm -hmm. going to direct me. Mm -hmm. So you get layer upon layer upon layer of value. And it is actually, it's been a long time since I watched it, but uh, yeah, I can recall certain scenes from it. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a piece of art. It is a piece of art, uh, which yeah. is, you know, um, understandable when it's Scorsese. It's yeah. very, it's a lot more than a live concert, which Aye. is what we're used to with music, um, videos yeah. or, or films. It's, this was yeah. scripted. Yeah. Scorsese yeah. had his best um, technicians well on lit. it. Aye. Aye. Um, yeah. And well, let, let's just pick out a little moment within yeah. that. So it was scripted, but I think the most yeah. famous moment in it is the unscripted moment when Clapton loses his um, his um, guitar uh, strap. Aye, aye, aye. Um, I don't know if you can remember that. So Clapton has gone oh, into his oh. very laid back. Wait, he would, knows he he's the be best in the point. world. <laughs> so, so I think it was 76. Aye, um, aye. Was end of 75, or early 76. Right. Um, Thanksgiving Day. Um and, and and Clapton actually for a second loses his guitar mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm, um, Robertson has to step in and improvise. Yeah, 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 which gives it some authenticity. There you go. I guess. I mean, it's an important point. Although curated and polished, it's it's still real. It's mm -hmm. authentic. Mm -hmm. And it's live, and anything can happen. And there's a verve and an energy about that that. Whereas if you watch a lot of even live concerts or live albums, mm -hmm. they're doctored or, yeah. you know, they're remastered to, to be seamless. Mm -hmm. So if you have something there, I mean, in, in, in psychology, it's interesting. I mean, what's attractive in a personality, there are many things, but one is to be fallible mm -hmm. <clears throat> because we're all fallible. Therefore, mm -hmm. you have something in common. So there's, you set it up well, Eric. And Clapton is God. Here he can't even hold on to his guitar. Yeah, yeah, schoolboy <laughs> error. Come on. He maybe had a drink. I'm not sure. Yeah, possibly. But um, so 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 you've got a wry smile when that that type of things ha type of thing happens. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, all of these things combine. In a, in a sort of synergistic way to, to say, well, here here is value, but what's happening is a kind of transference of an emotional connect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the audience, that they're in a heightened state and they're enjoying it more than something else. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they're processing it differently in a deeper way, in a more elaborate way, both intellectually and emotionally, which relates to memory, so it's why I can recall particular scenes from it, and why you you know I didn't see it yesterday. So so and that idea relates to share of mind, share of heart, mm -hmm. which is you know to to make anything uh, relevant. So that you know, although we looked at kind of um, sonic signatures, with uh, we just considered. Um, we call them records, mm -hmm. which was oral. And, and then there's lyrics and making sense of the lyrics and so on. But here you have the visual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. So you get more sensory stimuli engaging the audience. And that's kind of the link to you're still you're telling a story with music, but he, here's another platform in movies where, where you can maybe tell stories uh, in, a, in a different way that have even further punch mm -hmm. in terms of uh, connecting with with the audience. And I mean, you and I have talked about it, and this is where product placement, Edward Bernays, mm -hmm. Freud's nephew, comes in with, well, why do you see uh, brands in movies? Mm -hmm. um, they're almost either above the line sometime or below the line subliminal, but they're there. Why do you see them? Because all of that material that we just talked about, that idea of the emotional connect. Mm. And more often than not, movies feature archetypes, heroes, people that resonate with us, who we'd like to be like, who are indeed using these artifacts. So there's a, there's a transference of value between the actor, the situation, the context, and the artifact, and then the audience, who then 
either consciously or unconsciously goes and buys the tag because Steve McQueen wore the tag and and Le Mans or whatever whatever it was, you know. Yeah. And and what about the soundtrack in that then? So so th we've kind of reversed into this a little bit because there's Aye. you know they ask <laughs> Scorsese to yeah. to to film what is was the last concert, the last waltz. The last waltz. Now <clears throat> there's all sorts of rumors and conspiracies and so on around that and how mm. manufactured it was and if that really was the plan. But but let's leave that and, and step forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I know you admire Scorsese, maybe mm -hmm. maybe not the director you know best. <clears throat> but the the question is, well, what how has he used soundtrack then in some of his other uh, yeah movies? So like what you're saying. So there's the physical product. Yeah. So that a vodka, Aston Martin, tag, whatever it is. But <clears throat> what about you know the use of the Rolling Stones or something like that in a yeah. soundtrack? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's the same thing. I mean, one of his contemporaries may be Francis Ford Cop Coppola. Coppola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Apocalypse Now, and I think he he was instrumental in changing the way how movies, how audiences heard and experienced movies with, with Dolby. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he pioneered that, that, that yeah, um, an apocalypse now, you know, Vietnam. And he wanted the audience, even if you're sitting at the back, the idea was that where well, you would hear the helicopter fly right, right round about you. So sonically, and again, it, it becomes more immersive. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it can even, you know, then that's not a, a song, but it's it's a sound. It's, mm -hmm. it's a signature sound. Look at Star Wars in terms of those sonic signatures. I mean, Lucas and, and all of that stuff. What happens, and I mean, you see this with um, Tarantino, an awful lot, mm -hmm. Scorsese, mm -hmm. Goodfellas, particular songs, uh, or thematic styles of music that are very much aligned to the character or the the tension or where it's going mm -hmm. at that particular time. So it accelerates it. It makes it more kinetic. It makes you engage in a deeper way. Again, the, the, mm. sa the same thing uh, that we were talking about. I love that my one of my mo my favorite <coughs> M. Scorsese moments is the end of Goodfellas and um, <laughs> so, um, the character uh, Ray Liotta Ray Liotta. played yeah. and he's kind of turned he's flipped them yeah. and, and given evidence and there he is in, in kind of um, suburban bliss yeah. yeah and he's picking up his milk yeah. and they're like oh, right. you know and you think that he's going to be quite happy. <laughs> are you happy with now with your life looking at weird, uh, uh, kind of chaotic yeah, but very yeah. exciting life that he'd read mm -hmm. and he drops in the Sex Pistols track yeah just as yeah, he kind of says yeah. no really yeah you know yeah. he's still highly rebellious and and so maybe he's living through the Sex Pistols then at that point that's how you know he has uh, that rebellious nature but he's you know got the Ford people carry her on the driveway mm. and and everything's changed uh so yeah i love that i mean i i, I get i remember the scene i get what, what i think scorsese has been very maybe you can overanalyze it but i think you're right you know he's been very sophisticated that it's the kind of juxtaposition of what you would expect some kind of serene calm thing so in the, in the outer level everything oh, he's still alive and he's, he's you know but internally he's actually someone else you know so so and i mean in movies and music and writing and all of these things and in advertising maybe less so recently but th things are multi-layered <clears throat> where you could assume uh that your audience is fairly sophisticated that the, they 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 will make it it's not a passive recipient you're actively participating in now wait a minute what does that mean you're trying to join the dots just like we talked about with hotel california now wait a minute what does that song mean mm -hmm. you know the ambiguity of, of the song is intentional mm -hmm. from fry and henley so that the audience is left to participate 
And why listen to it more than once? Well, you, you're searching for the, the meaning. And, you know, in a personal note, I have referred to that particular scene. I was in a conversation with my brother, and I said, I feel like the guy at the end of Goodfellas sometimes in Denmark, you know, and I had this, the previous life of guitar playing and stuff. It's yeah. calmed down a, a yeah, little yeah, bit, yeah. but that's a good scene. It Again, you scene. can relate to it. There you yeah. go. I was relating to it. And yeah. yeah, no, yeah. no, I know what you mean. I think lots of people can in their lives, whether it's, <clears throat> Yeah, settle down in a, in a, in a nine to five job, uh -huh. uh, you know, a wife and two point two kids uh, or whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, we've not all been gangsters and all the rest. No, of it I wasn't like that a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I get it. And yeah, okay. Well, let's maybe um, pull in some some ideas yeah. uh, around brand and and brand management in, yeah. in a couple of minutes. But if this is the start of of another series, let's mm -hmm. say. I think maybe like our music, maybe less so that we don't always have to go back to the 70s or late no, 60s, no, no. Yeah. early 80s, you know, yeah, in Van in Halen 80s. or whatever. Uh, but, you know, well, you've, you've mentioned a couple of 70s, 80s, maybe 90s directors. Uh -huh. what, how would you describe your your taste in, yeah. in cinema? Eclectic. Right. You know, lots of different things. But funnily enough, and my son's now of the age and he had a T-shirt on with... A DeLorean and the, 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 the number plates out at a time. And he just liked the T-shirt. And I, I assumed he knew. And I said, mm. do you know where that? And no. And I said, well, that's Back to the Future. What's that? It's a movie. And I said, well, let's watch this movie. And he loved it. And, you know, uh, Marty McFly and the doc and all of that. And uh, Robert Zemeckis. And it's it's... It's a clever movie. Again, it's it's an intelligent movie. It's a funny movie. It's Molly layered And I think it's more in the second one, I noticed. Um, but it's there in the first one. I think there's a part where uh, the Michael J. Fox character plays some music to his his father. Mm -hmm. And it's Van Halen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, that, as, 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 yeah, like she, that, she yeah. Get loads of little kind of mm -hmm. micro... Mm -hmm. Uh, sort of references the hey that's pretty cool and then laterally he he invents rock and roll guitar all right okay <laughs> for chuck berry yeah, because yeah, chuck's yeah. cousins in the band and you go yeah. oh, so, so you get a clever thing with self it becomes self-reflexive it's playing with the then audience's knowledge base yeah, sure. to add value and make you oh okay and get, I think they call them Easter eggs now, or for you know little secrets and things. Yeah. In movies, but the second one, we watched that, and he goes to the future, and there's a kind of uh, center of the town, and I think it's two thousand then and seventeen or something, and it's Jaws twenty five or whatever. <laughs> but he pulls on his sneakers, and they're Nikes, mm -hmm. and there's no laces, but they lace up themselves. Oh, so yeah, you, yeah. I think Nike's working on that just now. Yeah. So I mean, those movies, um, 1984, 1986, eighty seven. Yeah. Uh, you see a lot of kind of done well, but heavy precursors for for what was going to come. Mm -hmm. The the movies I like. Predominantly, and we just went to see um, what's the what's the guy called? Uh, invented the the bomb, open open eye. Yeah, yeah, open yeah. yeah. That's Something like that. Just now in cinemas, yeah. Which I think Christopher Nolan wrote, directed, long movie, character driven movie, lot of dialogue, surreal movie. Mm -hmm. It echoed, you know, maybe something like All the President's Men, Robert mm -hmm. Redford, Dustin Hoffman, 70s movies. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the the audiences have been saturated with, and I like them, it's fun, the superhero thing and mm -hmm. explosion thing, mm -hmm. and but there's no depth to it. Mm -hmm. It's what we're talking about. It's a quick fix that you don't, and then you want more of that to feed you up. But something like this, you know, there's a lot of uh, material in it. Big fan historically the Bond movies and they started to move mm. oh, yeah. quite heavily towards. Changes, yeah. uh, you, you, they were criticised for a lot of product placement. I I don't know that James Bond actually, and no disrespect to Heineken, you know, but does he drink? Does that character drink Heineken? Mm. Does he drive 
afford. Mm-hmm. I'm not well, so I think sure. You're stretching uh, yeah, the, the imagination a little bit there. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. And 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 are we yeah. convinced even by it? Um, you know, you've analysed it differently mm. as a brand expert, but I think your yeah. average cinema goer and consumer, I don't know if they would really buy that. Yeah, and it's a great movie overall, Casino Royale, and Daniel Craig's great in it. And, but there is a scene where it's just him driving a Ford mm. for for nothing other than, hey, you know, mm-hmm. this Ford have obviously put, mm-hmm. put some money into it. It's no moving character, whatever. So you've got to be careful with... Wait a minute, am I watching a movie with there's some meaningful, credible, appropriately well done, slick, curated product placement that's almost seamless and adds value? Or is it abrupt? Kind of cynical. Yeah. 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 And jumping back, yeah. I don't know if you remember when we played uh, Bob Seeger and the Silver Bullet Band. I remember that. And, and we yeah. spoke how he, um, Ford had been asking him and his people oh, right. <laughs> to, to use some of his music uh, yeah, and eventually they gave in for a very mm-hmm. large check mm-hmm. for me yeah that's a better fit yeah you know the big yeah. ford pickup and yeah bob seeger yeah that that makes sense and uh, there you go that that idea of um congruence or goodness of fit mm. so the the Originally, what was it the Rolex with Bond? I think mm-hmm. it became Omega with him. I mean, the st- but that goodness of fit. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Heineken's a bit of a reach, although I have partook in Heineken. Reaches but, still the parts that beers don't. Well, right? they, <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Uh, yeah. That was nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, and I'll kind of uh, jam with you a little bit. Uh, my my uh, summer like cinema, yeah. cinema going, um, and you know we we've got boys of a of a similar age. My middle boys the, the same age as 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 your boy uh, Harrison. So um, enjoying some of those movies. We went to the latest Spider Man. You mentioned that I we've not seen it. Yet. And uh, while uh. you say the action hero stuff is kind of maybe just on a very basic level i mean what well i had to some of them yeah. stay awake <laughs> just by the way there's quite a lot going on it was, you know, it was multi-dimensional and, uh, and um yeah and i mean it's really interesting if you kind of look at evolution and stuff or mm-hmm. um brand loyalty and that um my boy's grandfather my father came with us as well so there were three generation uh, yeah. and yeah. so spidey is a character that he knows but this you know That's the animation and everything and, and the story's moved on and obviously the context moved on yeah but the fundamentals are are still there the core remains the same I, um yeah. so that was that was very very enjoyable it has has to be said you know when well, it's interesting you would mention spider-man i've talked a big fan but stan lee talks about you know there was this other guy kal-el an alien Superman from another planet who's, you know, all of these things. So the, you know, which is the DC universe and he was at Marvel and and what he did was it's kind of like the antithesis. He takes this nerdy little kid who's completely fallible and who's clumsy and okay, here's a radioactive spider. Here's a mechanism. Um, that transforms him into Spider-Man. But at the same time, he's, for the mainstay, he's still this teenage, so there's this dual identity thing. Now, who was the target, you know, in marketing, the target audience was was kids. Mm -hmm. They were Peter Parker Mm -hmm. because they were saying, oh, that's like me. And but what Stan was doing was okay. It's that self-image congruence. But what he was also doing was, hey, you you can be a superhero too. It's a metaphor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the, for transformation. And, uh, and if you if you look at um, movies and if you look at branding, most of the time there's this idea of there's an attraction to the possibility of change. There's an odyssey, there's mm-hmm. a journey, mm-hmm. there's movement, there's a character arc. And I mean, Spider-Man, 
It does that. And in some movies, you want them to do the same thing again and again. Sure. It's kind of like ACDC will come here. Well, okay, this, yeah. is, this is what we do. And it's a known thing. And they kind of, you know, interestingly, were jamming. They've kind of mixed it up a little bit. I get that with the Bond thing, you know. So Sean and George and Roger and Pierce and Daniel all did the same thing until Daniel, oh, he's he's no more. You know, and that, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And they, they had a throughput with the five movies. But I do remember my wife watching it when Daniel passes or James Bond passes away. And, she's, and I said, wait for the titles. James Bond will return. But it's a bold move. Mm. And you've really got Tom Cruise off making James Bond movies as Ethan Hunt. Sure. He's high entertainment, high yeah, opt-in, yeah, yeah. low, you know. So, so formulas change. And some of them you want the... the Part of the attraction is to go in that that change with them, mm -hmm. and you know, and just to come back to you know, so you go see the movie. And let's let's say you have the means, you know, it's fantasy, you know, and most of the artifacts are essentially meaningless. But what they're trying to do is attach meaning to it. Mm -hmm. So then the Aston Martin, or whatever, becomes aspirational that because. James Bond drives it. I recently watched a show on The Saint, the original TV show with uh, Roger Moore. And uh, they had originally asked uh, Jaguar to provide the car. Jaguar said, no, we can't do that. And, oh, Volvo stepped up mm -hmm. and knew the car and everything. Worldwide audience, this show has gone out and played everywhere. And forever. And then they come back with Ogilvy and they make, and I think Jaguar maybe even phoned them. Yeah, you know, we've got an XJS, <laughs> you know, it's a new car. Yeah. So, so you, the attraction of the persona uh, of the characters uh, combined with the goodness of it mm. with the, the, the brands that are placed. Yeah, the, the Saint brand then had some power at, yeah, at that point, at that didn't time, it? Yeah, had, yeah, had some power sure. the table. It's not quite turned, but um, yeah, <laughs> changed. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll come back to that point about going, yeah. right, okay, let, let's see, could we give, and it doesn't have to be yeah. totally explicit, some advice. I think people listening, <laughs> reading between the lines, can hear yeah, hopefully yeah. some of these techniques that you're unpacking yeah. and... Um, but I'll I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that, and I'll need I've it. not just right. been at the cinema this summer, but um, sure. you know you've got to fill fill the time. Um, so we also went to mm -hmm. see uh, Teenage Ninja Turtles. It's that back. Uh, yeah, that, that's that, yeah. It's, it's right. on it's on cinema screens probably mm -hmm. still. I think mm -hmm. um, it wasn't. Um, it was maybe just after my time if you like so i wasn't mad for it but i know people who were okay and to be to be fair probably people who are just a little bit younger than 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 me uh, um but it, it worked for our timetable so we went along but uh -huh. not being highly philosophical about it but there's <laughs> there's a strong message there that, mm. that you know similar to to, to, to mm. spider-man and that it's about inclusion you know, right. So, so, yeah. so the turtles yeah. are actually excluded, and and their yeah. their father yeah. live in the sewer because they're not accepted. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then by the end, they they start yeah. high school <clears> and <throat> the heroes, and and everyone likes them. But it's actually yeah. just about mm -hmm. it's about friendship and people liking you. And there's mm -hmm. strong message mm -hmm. about the people will like you for who you are. Yeah. As yeah. as well, and yeah. you know, for children at certain ages. You know, yeah. that's, that's, they're, they're good messages as well. Yeah. And I mean, you're back to, you know, Coppola talked about meta themes. Mm. So it's a meta theme. So that, that it's, it's, it is, it was, it will be relevant, you know, and it may be at, at the immediate level. Okay. This is, this is a kind of kids entertainment movie, me, but there's a powerful, strong message there. Same as Star Wars is a, is a morality p play, you know, sure. Shakespeare, it's a soap opera, uh, it, it, good versus evil, you know, all, all of that stuff uh, wh where where you're playing with those things and just riffing on your inclusion thing when I was saying 
we were in Sardinia and <clears> on <throat> holiday and I came back and we were at the airport and I, but I knackered the, the flip-flops I had and I, we were in the airport, things are cheaper coming back. And I thought, I'll buy a pair of flip-flops. And so I see these rainbow flip-flops and I thought, that was cool. The Havianas are, mm -hmm. I'm not sure oh, yeah, how you yeah. say it. Mm -hmm. So I go to buy them. And my wife comes up and she says, wow, that's really woke of you, Ron. <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah. And she said, uh, so why did you pick them? I said, well, they, they look cool with the rainbow. And she says, that's the pride thing for yeah, yeah, inclusion yeah. Sure. of all different, you know. And I said, yes, of course, it, I knew that, you know. So, but, but you get, it's the same thing. You get, well, here's an entertaining movie. Here's a good player, pair, sorry, a flip flop. But there's something else going on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that takes you to sustainability, ecotourism cultural movements, even political things. The, so so you're, you've got different layers that are appealing to different aspects of self. Obviously, my branding self had switched off completely because we were in holiday, so I was yeah, in, in slow motion mode, yeah. more I, so. But so it's amazing it, how a uh, movement, and, and it is, but it's been mm -hmm. fairly explicit, or it is yeah. now how they can capture I guess one of the oldest icons, isn't it? You know, it's, right. it's, a, it's a nature icon. It's a nature icon. And it did kind of come through kind of Greenpeace and so on yeah. as well, hasn't it, to yeah. end up where it is just now? Well, I mean, you know, in order to go, well, we'll go for not to go too heavy, but it is, it's like um, Umberto Eco with signs or symbols or signifiers. So there's a universal thing that we all recognize mm -hmm. that means it's a good thing. And there are connotations and associations with it. And, you know, Jung also talked a lot about this, that these signifiers um, become emotionally charged. They become dynamic, kinetic, more than just the symbol, the meanings, the associations with it. So just by unpacking it as, as we have... Oh, yeah, it's, it looks good because it's a rainbow, but there's a lot more going on. There was maybe, I don't know, let's think about it, 40, 50 pairs of flip-flops I mm -hmm. could have chosen. Mm -hmm. I only had eyes for this one. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? It's because the rainbow was on it. and Distinctive, yeah. Yeah, it becomes signature. It's a signature, yeah. Um, there, there's another debate around Rainbow, but that's for okay. the last show whether Blackmore was better with Deep Purple <laughs> or, or whether he was better with uh, Rainbow. But well, um, uh, uh, let's let's leave we'll that for back, series three. We'll come back to that. Series three. I can talk to you about that. Uh. So listen, I, I treat our listeners with um, a level of intelligence that they yeah. can take this and they, they can you know translate what we're mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. in terms of music and brands sure and um, you know these directors brand builders and mm -hmm. so on mm -hmm. but 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 maybe you know use an example or mm -hmm. um if, if if you want but mm -hmm. um maybe if there's someone kind of scratching their head going yeah, that's all very well but i'm not making movies and i'm not no. making music i don't mm -hmm. have a a global brand like Aston mm -hmm. Martin or Ford or or vodka mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. off. What what what's what's the takeaway for them? Do you, would you would you say? Well, one one of the takeaways, no matter how you do it, and if you if you don't have the budget or the inclination or the desire or the reach or the necessity for for product placement and all the rest of it, um, is to think about what we talked about in terms of okay. Um, how 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 do you make it more than the sum of its parts? And it, it might be a signifier. So you have a logo or a design of branding's not just that, but think about uh, the potential uh, emotional connect that the audience would have with that. So if you look at a Nike swoosh or an Adidas pyramid, it's like Maslow's uh, pyramid, or a, a, back in the day, a Levi's red tab, and, and it goes on and on and on and on and on, right? So think about um, what is that doing? Now, is it simply just the name or a symbol 
or are you back, are you in the Jungian thing? And it's not just you know the the, the marketeers took this and, and run with it. The it, it's to that's that's to get you uh, thinking and feeling. But then let's associate that with other things within your known consciousness. So that what you're doing is the if, if branding is about share of heart and share of mind, and I'm doing it quickly, then you've got a bigger share of heart, you've got a bigger share of mind. Then when it comes time to buy something, either in the physical environment or in an online environment, then the, then you're Googling that brand. Mm. Or you're seeing that, like the rainbow um, uh, flip flops, then you're seeing Iron Brew, as opposed to all of the other brands in the shelf. It, 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 it's selective perception mm -hmm. because the, it occupies more of your. Remember, we talked about hard drive, intellect, and soft drive heart and mm -hmm. what advertising is, and what sponsorship is, and what product placement is, and what. You know, um, TikTok is and Facebook is and all of these channels. Those are just new means to the same ends, which is to have sort of top of mind brand mm -hmm. salience, top of heart, larger share brand sal salience. So that would be, you know, the recommendation would be just look look a little bit uh, deeper. And this is where you get into brand storytelling and, mm -hmm. and brand stories, origins, authenticity. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just have to be the the image. It could be the, the shape of the, the the bottle, the design. Think um, absolute vodka. Mm -hmm. Vodka was Russian. No, it's not. Here's, here's Sweden with a signature style shape that you silhouette and you could say, okay, that's a particular... It, you know what you're doing is is getting the audience to remember, recognize. What was it we used to talk about? Um, Sir John Haggerty. Is it meaningful? Mm -hmm. Is it memorable? And does it motivate? Does it mm -hmm. make me want to run out and buy that? Mm -hmm. You know, is it meaningful? Is it memorable? And does it motivate? If you can tick all three of those, you're probably yeah, making is. sales over time. And what, what I was thinking while you were talking about that, and mm -hmm. I think it's easiest to use the big, well-known brands, but I think yeah. a lot of those tactics you could probably be doing at a local level, you do it at a, a local national level. level. It doesn't uh. have to be on a multi-million pound budget oh. and so on. Yeah. Those fundamentals, so if you're talking about, you know, heart and head yeah. and so on, it's, it's more about understanding that concept in the first instance and then working so. out the tactical stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you know, I was just thinking off the cut. You know, look at Gordon Ramsay now. Mm. I remember watching Gordon Ramsay then, and he had this little micro-budget show where he would go around different bars, eateries. And he, he's uh, presented as an affable character. He's clearly intelligent. He's clearly passionate about it. But what I noticed was every show was the same. Okay, let's reduce... Um, the menu and, and Gordon, you know, and there was a few expletives there and suddenly he's, he's creating a brand persona, Rams, Gordon Rams, he, he's becoming the brand that then takes him. So, so he's done it quietly at low budget and mm -hmm. then it gets an audience mm -hmm. and then, then he repeats and then he maybe dilutes yeah, it with it LA and yeah, yeah, sort of exactly. moved to a new market and that's, that's business, isn't uh, it? But it's the same thing. Yeah. So a lot of it is creative and to be creative, that's not coming with budget. That's coming with the deep smarts, mm -hmm. whatever they might they might be, and a little bit of inspiritus coming calling, a little bit of luck, a little bit of serendipity. But it's it's creative. Mm -hmm. You know, the Nike swoosh was uh, I forget his name. What's this? The Nike man. You read the book? Yeah, um, shoe dog knight. Aye, yeah. It's his buddy at yeah, art yeah, yeah. college. You know, a lot. It, it, it's not. Let's test these a thousand plus logos or designs. It's mm -hmm. you know that one feels good. It looks right, and then it becomes cool. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what's Apple? You know we understand that now in in the in speaking, but it, the brand becomes 
once you let the audience experience it and so on, then it becomes Apple. But to begin with, a lot of that, you know, I, I've I've talked to you about a lot, you know, 1984, mm-hmm. uh, Ridley Scott, seminal um, Super Bowl advertising campaign, no product, but a movie, yeah, yeah, storytelling was, yeah. with a lot of sonic things going on, a lot of metaphoria, and wow, okay, I forget the absolute verbatim tagline. 1984 will launch the Apple Macintosh Mm. and why 1984 will not be 1984, something along those lines. But it's riffing on Orwellian. You see, it's all of those multi-layer things. And sure, it's scaled up. Sure, it's an expensive advert. Uh, At the time, I think it won the award for the best ad of the 20th Mm -hmm. uh, century. I think you're right. It's on every list. Yeah. Certainly, that's made. Um, Listen, what... We'll we'll wrap up in a yeah. second and maybe lay out and this is us doing our planning on the on the hoof. Life. Which not, it's not it's the first not time we've of. done that, but uh, maybe maybe just a, a very kind of quick plug. Yeah. In that there's more to branding and brand strategy. I, I think you know what we'll try and do in this series is uh, raise awareness, educate without being patronizing, uh-huh. but then I hope people kind of realize, well, there is a depth to this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, don't be scared to to pick up the phone in the mm-hmm. old fashioned parlance um, if right. you can help, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you know that, that it doesn't it doesn't have to be some of those people you've name checked no. to, to be the, the expert. I'm happy to do that, um, but. Let's let's just look at this series moving forward. We've name checked a few directors, a few movie yeah, franchises, yeah. a couple of genres. What what should we 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 talk about? Obviously, we're open to um, ideas from <laughs> anyone. Um, again, you know, there's other channels. We don't just yeah. use the telephone. You you can uh, yeah. um, email us and all sorts of um, modern things. But yeah. Um, yeah, what what should we where where should we go from here? Well, I think you know it's. I think it's important. You know, it's that classic formula. Let's look at where we've been, where we are, but importantly, kind of, you know, to to play with that known phrase, future cast a, a mm-hmm. little bit. Mm-hmm. Where 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 is it going to go? Where's the kudos? I mean, gameplay is bigger than movie mm-hmm. product placements, and there. But I think it's it's how do you do things, not just what's going to happen, but you know how 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 would you then, like anything, how do you do it well with with integrity, with with finesse and with potency mm-hmm. that 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 doesn't necessarily have to have laser like focus on a particular outcome, but there's maybe several things that you want to happen with it but i think that the commerce is you know you see it in retail retails move towards immersive themed experiences it's mm-hmm. entertainment mm-hmm. it's not about the acquisition of artifacts that's part of it mm-hmm. or services or experiences but there's the true magic you know we, we talked about rory sutherland he talks about brand alchemy and magic. There's there's magic in brands. That's there's that secret source mm. that you talked about. Mm. Let's try and unpack, uncover. Well, what what is that? We might never get to know, but maybe we can illuminate that a little bit more, so that people can have key takeaways for them that in their business or in their lives, they say, "Well, I could use this." Because a lot of what we do, and you and I have done it. And we did it when we didn't know we were doing it, maybe, or I didn't. I can't speak for you. But it's personal branding. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta you gotta turn up for the interview, you gotta give give the talk, you're in a meeting, whatever it is, there's a prospective client, you know, what are they buying? What are they attracted to? So it transfers mm-hmm. to it's not just about okay, we, we sell a thing or a service or an experience mm. and even if you do behind that is is the person brands are made up of organizations made up of people mm-hmm. so so you could take it and you can you can use some of the 
the the toolkit or tools uh, with that. Yeah, that was think, a long winded no, answer. No, I think I think uh, that's more than enough for us I would say um, so. <laughs> to be to be getting on with. Aye, uh, aye. But no, listen, it's lovely to see you again. It was great nice, to see you. Nice talking to you, and uh, I look forward to recording some more episodes with you. Thank you very uh, much. My pleasure, Finlay. I hope to ask you questions too, but that's the way that you went. You don't have to. Don't worry. No, no. Okay. Thank <laughs> right, you, Finlay. Thank you. Thank cheers. You. Cheers. <laughs>